Hello and welcome back to the Talent Talks podcast. Welcome actually to the pilot episode of the fourth season. It's your boy, some animated drawing here, and I'm joined by Derek Spearman, Vixen, and uh, Olivia Volkel. Is that how you say it? Volkel, yeah. Oh, Volkel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sorry for butchering your last name and stuff. And this is the first Talent Talks of the new semester, season four, episode one. And y- y'all might be wondering, where's uh, where's where's Nick? And Nick actually parted ways with the talent so he could focus on other areas of his life. And he transferred the podcast over to me. And now I'm the new host and I'll be sticking with y'all for this semester. Uh, Before we begin, I'd first like to express my gratitude for Nick. It means a lot to me that he trusted me with the podcast that he created, especially with the experience that I have. And uh, if you're watching this, Nick, I just want to say thank you for putting the talent talk in my hands now. And I won't let you down. So just wanted to get that out there before we started so yes. And uh, I'd like to announce now that I'm leaving the talent, so... Uh, no, that's not true. Uh, we're not... <laughs> yeah, so... <clears throat> yeah, new faces, new names, definitely a lot of new things going on. Uh, if you want, I can uh, go down the line, have you all introduce yourselves. Maybe tell the viewers something interesting about yourself. Uh, let's go clockwise, I guess. Olivia, we've seen you before. I believe you're back with us again. Yes. Hi everyone. So um, last semester I contributed more on the writing side, but now I'm wanting to extend that. Um, I'm also the president of the club now, so that's really exciting. Um, but something interesting about me, um, I speak German and I was born in Germany. Awesome. Awesome. And what was your experience living like? Uh, what was your experience like living in Germany? Well, I actually moved um, to California pretty young. I was, you know, half year old or something like that. So I do not remember. <laughs> but uh, okay. I have family there, so it definitely holds a place in my heart. Awesome. And uh, can you say something in German for us? Um. Let me think. Okay. Um. Hello, Ala. Ich bin Olivia, and yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it's great to have you back. Hi, Vixen. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Um, so this is my first semester with the Talon. So I just, I'm really grateful to like be able to be a part of this. Um, so thank you guys. And um, something interesting about me, well. Hmm. Sorry, I'm terrible at coming up with stuff on the spot. Um, uh, don't worry, it can be anything. This is a judgment-free zone. Um, I am actually obsessed with dyeing my hair. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's something. It's been three different colors in just as many months. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. That's pretty cool. And uh, how did you discover our little secret hideaway? Um, well, through the, through the Discord server, I was just really interested in, um, in seeing, like, what this podcast was about, so yeah. All right. Well, I can tell you right now, it's going to be about all sorts of different things. Yeah, with me pulling on the strings now, (laughs) definitely going to have a lot of different varieties of topics and stuff, and uh, it's going to be fun. So yeah. Hi, Derek. What's up? All right. So my name is Derek. I'd like to say, I guess an interesting thing about me is like, I'm somewhat of a sports junkie, more specifically, especially about like football and baseball. And this would be my first semester with the Talon. All right. Well, welcome to the club. Uh, do you have any specific teams that you particularly enjoy more than others or any teams? that? You yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the Los Angeles Chargers and the Los Angeles Dodgers, respectively. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty, well, it's a pleasure to have you on board with us as well, and uh, here's to a fun semester. Uh, And uh, speaking of the semester, did anybody do anything interesting over the summer of sorts? Um, not particularly. I went to Montana, which was fun. Okay. Got away from the heat a bit. (laughs) Uh, What's it like in Montana? Very green, so pretty. 
interesting. And uh, you said you got away from all the heat. Is it like cooler up there? Like how much cooler is it up there than it is here? Particularly. Well, it's definitely not a hundred right now, but um, they get occasional showers, so that was nice. It's pretty cool. I wish we got occasional showers down here, uh, but then again, I'd probably be saying I wish it was hot if we'd be getting showers occasionally. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it all it always kind of. It's always kind of intriguing how you would say, oh yeah, I wish something was totally different about the way we're living now. Like if you say, oh yeah, I wish that we were getting a lot more rain here than sunshine and stuff like that. And then immediately when it starts like raining frequently and stuff like adapting to the different environments and wishing that we had the other one. Yes, if grass you know is I mean. always greener. Yeah, the grass is always greener on the other side, which is, I guess is entirely true. And uh, in your case, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, anybody else do anything exciting over the summer? E exciting, newsworthy, boring? It doesn't really matter to me. I mean, over the summer, I did go to SeaWorld with my family. All right, and how was that? It was pretty fun. I got to go on various roller coasters that they have there. I forgot. I, I didn't know that they actually had roller coasters because it's been a while since I've been there. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of roller coasters? I'm kind of a roller coaster junkie to a. Not that huge of an extent of a roller coaster junkie, but I do kind of take interest in them. What kind of roller coasters they got over there? Um, I forgot the names of them, but according to them, like one of the roller coasters they have is like one of the tallest roller coasters in America. Really? Yeah. And uh, what is the name of the roller coaster? Um, I think it's called the Emperor. I know it was the name of one of the roller coasters, and then. The Emperor. Yeah, yeah, this guy I think it was called the Emperor, named after the Emperor Penguin. Oh, the Emperor. Sorry, I heard Emperor. Yeah. No, Emperor. <laughs> nice. Uh, nice. You said it was one of the tallest ones in America? Yeah, like, at least according to them. Uh huh. Uh, you know, speaking of tall roller coasters, have you ever uh, rode Goliath at Six Flags Magic Mountain? Oh, I've, I've never been to Six Flags. I'd love to go, though. Oh, yeah, you're definitely missing out. Uh, Six Flags has, I think, 18, 19 something roller coasters, and they've got a they've got a lot of cool rides there. Uh, they have Goliath, they have Twisted Colossus, which is the it's essentially like a dueling coaster, but you actually get to ride both the blue side and the green side of the track, where eventually they like connect. It's if I remember correctly, the longest roller coaster, like one of the longest roller coasters in America, it has the longest runtime. Uh, since you're literally wow. yeah, it actually it drops twice. So you get, you get in a train, and then it goes through this series of bumps and stuff, and then you go up the first drop, which is blue, and you see the green drop right next to it, and so you go all the way to the top of the blue drop, and then you start to go down, and then go through a regular, like, probably lasts like a minute or something, like, average roller coaster length, and then you start to go up again on the green side where the track turns green, and then you go through like another minute, so it's essentially two roller coasters in one ride, actually. I think it's the best right there, if you want my honest opinion. I mean, that sounds cool. Like, I need to get on that. <laughs> yeah, you, you do. Especially if you're, like, really into roller coasters. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah, which, I was just curious. Uh, do you guys prefer roller coaster parks or water parks? Like, y'all got a preference for that sort of thing? It, I feel like it depends on the time of year for me like roller coasters in the cooler months just because otherwise they're really hot they get really hot but during the summer it's definitely water parks yeah i'd have to agree with her on that one i mean i guess overall i don't necessarily have a preference although i've never been to a water park before but <laughs> i've been on plenty of water rides but not necessarily a water park like splash mountain type things yeah like splash mountain you know they have a couple water rides at sea world yeah I think they also have, uh, well, they have that one, that one rampant ride sort of thing at Six Flags. And then they got another one at Knott's Berry Farm, which is similar. I think, I guess it's their version of Splash Mountain. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've heard of that. I'm going to be honest, I used to love going on those when I was little. Like, I used to love Splash Mountain type rides. Now that I carry a wallet and a phone and stuff, and now that <laughs> I know how it feels when my socks get wet, I actually hate them now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I can definitely relate to roller coasters getting extremely hot, like in the summertime. I experience the same thing when I go into my 
black car every single day with the steering wheel. And I touch it, and it's like it's, it's, it's almost like a death grip. Almost, I can't touch the thing. Oh yeah. Otherwise, I'll like burn my hands off. The stuff, and because my car is black, it tends to absorb sunlight a lot faster than brighter color cars and stuff. It's interesting mm -hmm. how the sunlights and stuff work. But I've actually never been to a water park either. It's kind of I've stopped going swimming a while ago because one time last year I went to a pool with my buddies, and I ended up getting swimmer's ear, and I had to go to the doctor and get this like stuff that you can. That you have to put in your ears, yeah, and then it just drains your ears of all the buildup and stuff. It was definitely not fun. Oh, that's the first time I've heard of swimmer's ear. Yeah, it's definitely not fun. <clears throat> when you get too much water in your ear, it like goes into your head and stuff, and it tampers with your. It tampers with your eardrums, so you hear this high pitched ringing all the time, and you practically just can't hear out that ear at all. So yeah, it's definitely mm. not fun. You, it's def it's this thing called tinnitus. Where you can get it when you get too much water in your ear. Sometimes you get it when you're exposed to like really, really loud noises. When you're at concerts and stuff and it's like really, really loud, that can definitely cause tinnitus too. Or you'll be walking around with a high pitch ringing in your ear. Now, which speaking, while on the topic of doctors and stuff, uh, do you guys like going to the doctor better or dentists? <laughs> oh gosh, is that even a choice? <laughs> yeah, I mean, both honestly are. Yeah, neither are neither neither are an enjoyable experience. So, <laughs> like, I get anxious in the waiting room for either one. Mm -hmm. If I had to choose, I would definitely choose doctor over dentist. And why's that? <laughs> I'd have to agree. Yep. I don't know. Dentists are just like it feels so. I don't know. Weird, and it's like uh, touching my teeth. I don't know. It's strange. No, I definitely get you there. Usually whenever I go to the dentist, I always wear like a pair of sunglasses and stuff because they're always shining like bright lights on you and stuff. You know, it's, it's funny because the last time I went to a dentist, they, th th this is what they said to me the last time I went to the dentist. This is what they said to me is, hello, you don't know me, but I know you. I want to play a game. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then. <laughs> Ever since I've watched those movies, I now get, get kind of stingy about going into like dentists and stuff. They're a lot more of an experience, or right? yeah, they're definitely a lot more of an experience than like doctors are. Because when you're going to the dentist, you know something's going to get done to you, as opposed to when you're going to the doctor, and they're just going to—I mean, they do do some stuff to you. Whereas dentists, they're like constantly like messing with your teeth and stuff, which. Just out of curiosity, how many of y'all actually floss? Every day. Really? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not as often as I'd like to. Really? Because for the longest time, I've always been like the worst flosser ever. I never remembered to floss or do none of that stuff. And every single time I went to the dentist, they've always told me the same thing. Make sure you're flossing or you'll get gum disease and your teeth are going to fall out and die. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, okay, maybe they didn't say that. It doesn't really matter. That's always. Dentists are, dentists are aggressive. <laughs> well, that's one way to scare people in the flossing every day. <laughs> well, they didn't say it just like that. Of course, I'm being hyperbolic. But actually, not even kidding you, the last one that I went to actually like showed me a picture of what happened to someone's teeth because he didn't floss. And I was like, oh, heck no, I don't want that to happen to me. And so I've actually been flossing pretty consistently. Sure, there'll be some nights where I do occasionally forget, but I've actually, this is probably the first time in about 22 years where I've been consistently flossing my teeth. But it's always been like a, it's always been a pretty big struggle for me to remember to floss, because for the longest time, I'd always forget to do so, and I was never really, never really scared into potentially something happening to my teeth. Especially because they've never been, I can't even think of one day where they've been like perfectly white and stuff. Mm -hmm. Who is in your guys' mind the most overrated musician? Ooh, that's a tough one. <laughs> I, have to, I have to think long and hard about that. I can't necessarily think of one from the spot. Mm -hmm. 
Like, I have favorites, but I can't really say who's the most overrated. Yeah, like, I mean, if you ask my favorite artist, that's an easy question to answer, but most overrated. Like, like who's your favorite, though? Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, call me basic for that if you want, but personally, I love her music, so... If I remember correctly, Taylor Swift's actually one of the few artists that I can actually think of that writes her own music. She does write her own music. She's actually releasing a new album October 21st. So, really? yeah, that's exciting. I see. De definitely respectable. Uh, excuse me. Definitely respectable on that part. Because uh, it seems like a lot of artists are busy doing other stuff, like a bunch of other artist stuff and don't really have a lot of time to write their own music. I recently found out that Snoop Dogg actually doesn't write his own music. Huh. <laughs> Would you look at that? <laughs> yeah, I did. Uh, but there, there's nobody that comes to mind where you, you listen to their music and think, why is this person so popular? You know no I mean? one right now. But, I mean, I'm sure there's someone that I'd be like, yeah, why are they popular? But, you know. Mm -hmm. They're popular for a reason, right? Like, yeah. Well, exactly. I guess I guess there's I guess there's I guess there's like some people like in like the rap game that gets me a little like how did they get famous? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like when I look at people like I guess Little Pump and Six Nine guys like that, I'm like, how did they get popular? Yeah, Cause I just yeah. don't get the appeal. You know, I mean, everyone has their taste, but. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Because, like, I think the thing about rap music that I I, th I feel like it's a sort of misconception that the rap game kind of gets is that you kind of have, a, a like, select topics. You spit bars about them, rinse, repeat for 80 more songs, boom, the rap genre. Uh, I do definitely think that that is a misconception about the rap community and stuff. And this is coming from somebody who doesn't particularly enjoy rap because he thinks it's repetitive. But I believe a lot of the people, of people who are really big in the rap genre, oftentimes rap about a lot of things that maybe they have gone through and stuff like that. A lot of things, because I feel like you really need to have a connection with the music in order to really resonate with them. And that's kind of, I feel like that's the way it is to, like with all music to a certain extent. Uh, but rap is, I think, the perfect example of music that you really have to connect to in order to really understand and appreciate and stuff. I mean, there's some rap songs that I like just because I think they have like a groovy beat, but I can never really, because it's, it's not my thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, me, I listen to just about any genre. I mean, I guess I'm not, I'm not too picky mm -hmm. as far as music genre goes. No, neither am I. I'll admit. Like, I'll go from listening to Kendrick Lamar than to listening to Metallica. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm really neutral to all genres. Pretty much all genres. I can listen to just about anything. I mean, I work at retail, and they play the same three songs every single day. Um, <laughs> but if there's, there's actually one artist that stands out to me more so than all the other ones... Uh, this is uh, the one person I think is extremely overrated, and the one person who I don't understand to why people like is Billie Eilish. What? Yeah, I, I don't I don't get the appeal either. <laughs> yeah, that's like I don't really get the appeal with her either. <laughs> I like I I mean I've tried listening to her music. I can't quite get into it. Mm -hmm. But it's not just Billie Eilish either, because I mean if you, if you like Billie Eilish, I ain't trying to like throw shade or anything because I mean you like what you like but I, I I never understood why our most popular song was Bad Guy like I've listened to it through headphones before and the whispering just like ugh just stop that song really came on my radar because it became a meme for a bit really yeah like I remember people I remember people making memes but I remember someone making a Minecraft parody of it too there is <laughs> where, they, where they have a zombie well, they have the zombie noise replacing, I guess, when she says, yeah, if she's saying, I'm a, I like a bad guy or whatever. Oh, so I'm a, like that? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, the zombie making that sound. That sounds funny. <laughs> Dude, I miss when Minecraft parodies were a thing. Creeper. Oh, man. 
Yeah, I like how the the parody of that Coldplay song actually became more pop. Well, it became just as popular as the original song. Like a lot of people like Viva La Vida and Fallen Kingdom just about equally. Oh wait a minute! The original song uh, from Fallen Kingdom was by Coldplay. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, because I heard that Coldplay was not all that great. It seemed it wasn't very much of a fan favorite when talking to most people and what they've tasted music. That and Twenty One Pilots. Yeah, Twenty One Pilots. I like I like some songs from them. Like they're they're hit or miss to me. Same with mm -hmm. like I guess a lot of pop rock bands kind of are. Yeah. I would say I I feel like there's a lot of. How do I put it? I guess there's a lot of sound diversity and stuff like that when it comes to the what do you call them? The alternative rock genre. Because when you think when you think about it, there are so many different styles of music. Like you could record, like you 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 could record all of your music played live on actual instruments, like the bass and the electric guitars and stuff, and the drums like in a studio and stuff but you could also do the exact same thing by opening up like an app on your computer or on your phone stuff like that and produce something of similar sounding so I definitely think that alternative rock is one of the more how do I say it's definitely one of the more out there genres I like to say because there are so many different things that you could classify as alternative rock and stuff like that yeah I guess I guess that's a genre I listen to probably the second most. Mm -hmm. It's probably alternative rock. Probably listen to about the second most. And uh, what genre do you listen to the most, do you think? The most, um, I think it's called like epic music. It's like music like used for like trailers and battle scenes and movies and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Like, I listen to a lot of music like that. Like my favorite artist overall is probably this, you know, I guess it's, I guess they classify themselves as more of a music company between two composers called Two Steps from Hell. Uh huh. And they make they make a lot of you know battle music and stuff like that stuff. It's good stuff to listen to, especially while working out. Oh yeah, for sure. Is most of their stuff like instrumental? Yeah. Yeah, there'll there'll be a little bit of singing here and there, but it's mostly like instrumental, like a lot of orchestral stuff, a little bit of electric guitar. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the the soundtrack for movies are always really really good, and stuff. And and when you say singing, do you mean like does some of them actually have like lyrics or just like the oh like type chorus like, type thing? Like yeah, like chorus type stuff. Sometimes sometimes it is just one person singing. A lot of time they're singing like sometimes sometimes people singing in a completely different language too. Like sometimes they'll be singing R Russian, German, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know it's very diverse. That's uh, how. It's yeah, for sure. You know, speaking of music in another language, there's actually a song I used to listen to a lot when I was a uh, when I was a kid. Uh, it's called Tiki Ti Tiki Ta by Claudio Villa. It's a uh, it's a pretty groovy song, I think. It's all in Italian. Uh, you guys should give it a listen. I might send a link or something in the music chat at some point. I mean, I'll give it a try. I mean, I listen to a lot of music that's non-English. <laughs> Me too, yeah. Like, there's this one Japanese rock band called Baby Metal that I <laughs> listen to. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I can't understand a word they're saying, but hey, I vibe with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. To me, as long as it's got, like, a groovy beat, and stuff because I, I I like listening to instrumentals more than I like listening to lyrics I'll be completely honest I like instrumentals more than lyrics which is why some of the music that I listen to is also instrumental uh, I also though, though I'm not though I'm not gonna lie there are a lot of good songs that do have lyrics as well it's, do you guys remember the video game Geometry Dash oh I don't remember that I never heard of that oh, <laughs> I, literally, first... I literally play it still <laughs> for real how do you not know Geometry Dash? No hate or anything. But... I don't know. I guess it just never, <laughs> it never really came on my radar. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. That, that game, I feel like designed, what? Defined a portion of my childhood. Like a large portion of my childhood. Did you just have the, like the, oh sorry, I didn't mean to cut anybody off. No, you're good. Okay. 
I thought someone was trying to talk. Uh, did you have the full version, have like an account that you created online and play like user created levels? Or did you just play like the deluxe version with the first few levels in it? I think it was the one where you create... I don't remember though, it was years ago. Mm -hmm. But all I remember is it was... Because if it was the computer version, then it was definitely the full version. Because hmm. I don't remember if I... I only remember playing it on the computer. I think it was my brother played it. Not on the computer, on the phone. I think my brother played it on the computer. You think? Because, but... oh man, what do you call it? I used to go hardcore on Geometry Dash. Like, that used to be one of the very few video games I actually played, like, extremely excessively. I was always going online trying to beat other people's levels and stuff. Trying to beat all the demon difficulty levels and stuff like that. Because the ones that the creator, like, the creator of the game gives you, those levels are, like, extremely easy. I feel like the bulk of Geometry Dash players, like, the main majority of them, especially the top pros, are the ones that play all the user-created levels and stuff. Because those were the good game, like, those were the good levels. Mm -hmm. I remember back in high school, I used to walk around listening to the soundtrack. The soundtrack was so good. You have artists like F777, uh, who else, Extruler, uh, Night Killer is my personal favorite one. Because uh, he always, they always did, like, these, like, electronic type music. That's another genre of music I really like, electronic mm -hmm. and stuff, where they always have... Yeah, my favorite was always Night Killer because he'd always have these piano pieces and stuff. So you, you kind of get like a class, like kind of a classical music vibe to him, but it's a lot more intense, especially when you hit that heavy dubstep beat. And then when when the beat drops, and then after the bass drop, you get into this like Skrillex type stuff, where there are definitely a lot of sounds in his music that sounds like it could come from like a Skrillex sound. And they very rarely have, like, voice samples and stuff. Usually when he does put voice samples in his songs, they're very... They're very brief. Like, there's one in his song, Fairy Dust. And stuff, and it's very, very, very brief. But yeah, I always liked Night Killer because he had a mix between classical music, like classical piano stuff, and Skrillex-type stuff. It's almost like classical music and Skrillex were morphed, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, Geometry Dash went down hard way back in the day. And definitely opened up the door, for me at least, to a lot of really, really good music. Mm -hmm. It's actually probably not every day you have somebody telling you, oh yeah, I walk around listening to Back on Track. <laughs> yes. And uh, you've never played Geometry Dash at all, Derek? No, I never. I never even heard of it. Uh, <laughs> like, it's never been on my radar before. This is my first time hearing about this. Uh huh. Uh, what you gotta do is you gotta go on the App Store and download the free version and just try the first few levels and then tell me what you think of it. Because it's actually a pretty fun game. But you kind of have to be a certain way. You have to have a lot of patience to actually be able to play Geometry Dash. Because way back in the day, I couldn't beat the 8th level. Now I can do it in one try. Mm -hmm. crazy. Uh... There are there any other video games y'all like? Um, I've recently been on a new kick. I used to love playing this and it kind of just came back again. Um, but Mario Kart will forever be like my favorite. Mario Kart is one of the best games ever made. No cap. It's also a game that ends a lot of friendships too. <laughs> oh yeah. That and Mario Party for sure. Yeah, like those games end a lot of friendship, especially like, you know, you throw a red shell at someone right ahead of you, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, a game that actually, now you're on the topic of ending friendships, a game that is absolutely notorious for doing this, but I have never, I've, I've only played it like a few times, I have it, all my friends have it, but we never played, is Move or Die. Have y'all ever played that? Never, never heard of that. that that's that's my that's the first time I'm hearing of that. <laughs> Have you guys played Fall Guys? No. I've heard of it. Like I've seen like I've seen a lot of my friends play it, but I never played it. Okay. Um. Anyways, it's like one of those party game type things where 
you party up with a bunch of people, and you're playing like these little like mini games and stuff, and you're trying to compete to see who wins. Obviously, the premise of it is if you stop moving, you'll start to lose health points and stuff. Uh, but there are all these different challenges, like cover the ground in your color. Uh, what else is there? I think there's like a hot potato type thing where you have a bomb and you're just playing hot potato with it. You have to pass it to different people and it needs to not blow up. Matter of fact, there's actually another game that I used to play on the PlayStation 2 that resembles this type format, Buzz Jr. Jungle Party, where you're playing as four different colored monkeys, blue, green, yellow, and orange, and you have all these like little party games and stuff. Uh, one of them is, I think, oh, what's it called? I, I don't remember what the name of it was, but I, I think it was Monkey Bomb, actually, where you have the bomb and you have to pass it to all of your fellow, all of your fellow friends and stuff your fellow competitors, and it's like a hot potato type thing where whoever has the bomb when it explodes loses points, and you gain points by holding the bomb for longer and longer and longer. So you're just sitting there holding the bomb forever, and you can either like hold it for a long time and then pass it to someone right about to explode, or risk having it explode on your turn. It's yeah, Party games is definitely a great genre. That sounds fun. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm gonna guess you guys have played Mario Party before. Yeah, <laughs> I played a lot of Mario games as a kid. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, Like Mario and Sonic games were like my main games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I did. I actually played more Mario games than I did Sonic. I used to play like a Sonic Flash game and stuff. Um, do you have any like vivid memories of Mario Sonic games you used to play like way back in the day? Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is probably one of my favorite games of all time. Like, I'd play that, like, on the, you know, Sega Collection games that they sometimes release. Mm-hmm. And then, like, so the first Sonic game I played on my DS was um, Sonic Rush Adventure. I don't think too many people know too much of that. But... Never even heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> But it's also one of my favorite games too, and then of course Sonic Colors is also a great game. And it's actually one of the better modern Sonic games. I think? I remember there used to be like a... what do you call them? There was like a... back when Crash Bandicoot the Insane Trilogy was released, there was another Sonic game that was released due to the fact that it held a huge nostalgia factor, but for the life of me, I don't remember what the name of it was. Somewhere around 2017 was whenever it was released. Actually, I have to. I'm actually gonna go look it up. It's actually killing me that I don't remember the name of the Sonic game. Oh, Sonic Mania, that's what it was. Have you ever Sonic played that? Mania. Yeah. Yeah, I, I shoot, that's that it's been a while since I've been on that cuz I would rage so much playing that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like cuz I remember getting that not too long ago and I was remember I remember playing that for a bit. But there was one level that just got me raging, so I kind of just stopped. <laughs> I'll probably get back on that though eventually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this particular boss was annoying. Uh, which one was it? I forgot what it was because it wasn't from it wasn't from like a Sonic game I was familiar with. Like it was probably like from a Sonic CD game. I never played any of the Sonic CD games, but I'm gonna guess it was from that one. Mhm. Mm because definitely wasn't from like Sonic the Hedgehog one, two, or three, or Knuckles. Yeah. But yeah, the boss fights were always like something else in games like this. Dude, you want to know another game that actually goes down hard? Super Mario Brothers for the Wii. Any of y'all played that? I played Super Mario Brothers U, but from what I've heard, it's pretty much the same exact game, just on the Wii U. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, to a certain extent, all of the like Mar the new Super Mario Brothers game is technically the same thing. Just there's just more power ups and more stuff you can do. Yeah. I remember playing New Super Mario Bros. on the DS and then playing one on the Wii U. Mm -hmm. 
because the my first one was Super Mario Brothers DS, and that one I played the ever living heck out of. I never discovered. You know what? I never discovered worlds four and seven until like way later. <laughs> Like, do you do you remember how you got those worlds unlocked? Yeah, you had the you had the and to unlock world four, you had to beat the world two boss as Tiny Mario with like the mini me mushroom. And then for world seven, you had to beat the world five boss as Tiny Mario as well. And as you chase after Bowser Jr. with the princess, you I guess slip through this little crack and it take you to world four or world or world seven respectively. Uh huh. Yeah, I never noticed that until like way later, until I actually like looked up a video. Because I remember I was watching, I think, Dashy Games play it, and someone in his comment section said, in order to unlock worlds 4 and 7, you need to beat the 2 and 5 boss with the mini me mushroom. And yeah. that's actually a lot easier said than done. Because, like, yeah. The, that you have to use the ground pound attack in order to actually stomp the opponents like you normally would. Especially the World 5 boss, because that Piranha Plant was annoying. The Piranha... Uh, which one was the... I think it was like... I think it was Petey the Piranha Plant. Uh -huh. His big green Piranha Plant. <laughs> oh yeah, I think, I think I remember him now. I remember him very, very vaguely. Didn't he fly at one point? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, that particular boss was annoying. It was kind of a pain to try to unlock World Seven. Yeah. Yeah, I just I remember nothing about the World's Four and Seven bosses. Um, World Four was a giant Goomba. Like the Goomba would just grow out of nowhere and just become this gigantic mm -hmm. Goomba, and you had the you had the you know ground pound or whatever to inflict any kind of damage on him. Yeah. And then World 7's boss, I think, was... It was this one Koopa on the cloud thing. Except his cloud strikes lightning. Oh, like the... Latiku, whatever his name is? The guy yeah, who yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it was like that, but this cloud... It was, a, it was on a black cloud that strikes lightning. Uh-huh. And stuff like that. You know, you have to jump on top of it whenever it lowers itself. I see. Yeah, that sounds about right for a DS boss. And stuff. You know, speaking of which, do you prefer the DS bosses or the Wii bosses or Wii U, or whatever? I guess since I guess I preferred the DS just because it was a smaller controller uh -huh. <laughs> compared to the Wii's big tablet that you had to play on. Yeah, I get what you mean. So I guess I preferred the Wii bosses. Yeah, the Wii bosses. Yeah, easier to maneuver. Yeah, the Wii bosses I always thought were a lot more fun. Uh, you didn't get the junior boss fights until you got to the airship where he'd fight you in his clown car, but you'd get the Koopalings, and then at the second boss fight that you faced with the Koopalings, you had Kemet come over there and screw everything up. <laughs> yeah, that 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 yeah, I remember. Yeah, that's pretty much they pretty much did the same thing for Super Mario Brothers U. Mm-hmm. Like that, like they'd have Kemic buff the boss at the end. Which actually, just out of curiosity, in the Wii U version, did you have to fight the Koopalings as well as in the Wii version? Yeah, you had to fight all the different various Koopalings as well. Like those, those are all like the bosses at the end of each world. Uh huh. Yeah, you know. And I guess, and, and I guess the in between boss was this weird monster. I forgot what his name was. I see. But it wasn't Baby Bowser or nothing like that. No. Okay. I don't remember facing Baby Bowser until like once you got towards the end. Uh huh. Uh, but yes, I just remember the Wii version having all the Koopalings and stuff, and then there were these various monsters on the DS version and stuff. I always liked the one on the Wii better because I thought it was more exciting to actually have to sa face the same boss twice. Whereas on the Wii version you get a Bowser Jr. boss fight every single world you'd go. You get at least one and then when he puts his mask on over his face he'd throw the shells. 
Oh, yeah, that, that, that annoyed me so much as a little kid playing on the DS. <laughs> and then he'd hide in his spiky shell every time yeah, he got yeah, close yeah, to him. Yeah, like, especially like, I try to jump on him and yeah, he turns into a spiky shell and he makes me shrink. Like, <laughs> dang mm -hmm. it. <laughs> yeah, I realized there were actually two ways you could beat him when he did that. I realized the easiest way was to have the fire flower and just throw the fireballs at him until he dies. Yeah. Just... Uh, the other way was to, if I remember this correctly, the other way was to wait for him to throw his shell, jump on it, uh, stop it from moving, throw it back at him, ground pound him once, and then hit him like regular the second time. Because when you hit him with a ground pound, that counts as two blows. And you're supposed to hit him three times. Oh, all right. Because like, cause, like, I remember, because I remember, because like, I forgot, like, I remember, like, I had to spam the fireball. I forgot other ways I beat him, because of course I didn't always have the fire plan on me. Yeah. You always have them, and uh, I always try to keep a flower handy with me in my saved item spot where you just tap on it and it'll appear above you. But yeah, that was definitely something that annoyed me, was when he started throwing the shells and stuff, and when he became harder to beat. Stuff. Do you remember the blue shell? Um... Was that the one that you were given? Like, it allows you to transform your... I guess it allows you to, I guess, hide in that shell? Yeah, essentially be a Koopa Troopa. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I remember using that. That was always, like, my favorite item, because you could always, like, kill... You could, you could, like, kill all the enemies just immediately with the super slide thing. Yeah, yeah, you just slide down and you just... <laughs> or was, like, any other Koopa shell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those were those were the good old days. Dude, and you're speaking of good Mario Kart games, or uh, yeah, Mario Kart on the Wii was that that was another game that went down hard, and also a game that I played to the absolute death. Actually, you know what? I'm probably about to bring my Wii back up and play some Mario Kart afterwards, because that that game was always fun. Did any of y'all ever complete Rainbow Road without falling off? Yes. <laughs> nope. Never? <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh, just hearing that name brings back memories <laughs> that I do not appreciate. <laughs> I hated that course. <laughs> what controllers did y'all use in the during the Mario Kart days? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, didn't, I never had the steering wheel, mm -hmm. unfortunately. No, no. So did you play with the nunchuck or the generic controller? I just played with the generic controller when I was on the Wii or the Wii U. And of course I played the DS and the 3DS versions as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had the, <clears throat> excuse me, I had the Wii version and I also had the DS version. And I remember playing both of those to absolute oblivion. Although I always liked the Wii version better because I, I feel like there was a lot more variety. You got a lot more characters as well. I think you only got like eight on the DS version. Yeah, the DS version was a little lackluster, but it's one of the things that's always kind of been the trend for DS games compared to Wii games. Mm -hmm. You know, there was actually an easier version of Rainbow Road on the DS version. Like, have you ever beaten the Rainbow Road on the DS? Wait, none of y'all were talking. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, just had a, I just had a really big lag spike, uh, so I'll ask again. Have any of y'all ever played, like, hey, have you ever played Rainbow Road on the DS? Yeah. That was probably the only version that was actually relatively decent in Rainbow Road. You think? <laughs> yeah, like on the Wii U, not so much. I don't think I've ever played the Wii U version before. The Wii version was cool because it was kind of like Mario Kart 7 as well, where you can glide and everything else too. Mm -hmm. Was that the version where it was like almost like pixelated and stuff, where all the tiles were like squares and stuff? And it was essentially like the Boo Valley or whatever it was from the Wii? Huh. Not sure. It's been a while since I've played, so I don't have too much. I can't necessarily recall. Mm -hmm. I see. That's something I definitely need to get back on. I need to find my Wii U. 
I know I got it somewhere in my room. Yeah, I need to I need to get my Wii out and give Mario Kart another spin. Yeah, but yeah, that was honestly like one of the best games ever made, and it is definitely def definitely something that I'm happy about. The fact that it's still being played today, and we're still having new sequels. Which is the latest one still eight? Um, I could have sworn I could have sworn they made one for the Nintendo Switch because I think eight was the Wii U. Yeah, that's what I play on now is the Nintendo Switch, and then there's also the deluxe one I think too. Uh huh. Because I remember Mario Kart 8 was released for the Switch as well as the Wii U. I was playing the Switch version the other night at my friend's house. Then we were also playing Mario Party, which is a pretty fun game. We were also playing Smash Brothers. Do you guys remember that game as well? Yes. Yes, Super Smash Brothers Brawl is probably my favorite. <laughs> Just because of the subspace story that mm -hmm. they had. Like that was when I also think you know they had Sonic in it too. Uh huh. I don't remember which one I had way back in the day. It was for the Wii, and I remember playing oh, that yeah. game to oblivion as well. I didn't oh, yeah. play that game as much as I played Mario Kart and the other game. I was oh yeah, I didn't play that one as much as Mario Kart and the classic Mario platformer, just because I thought it was like really repetitive and stuff. But I do remember enjoying that game quite a bit actually. So I think my favorite map was Pick the Chat. Favorite map? I don't necessarily have a particular one because I don't want to be. I don't want because like, like Battlefield was good, but Battlefield, but, you know, Battlefield was honestly the most easy. It was the most basic one because there was like most other courses had something random mm -hmm. attacking you, but Battlefield was honestly the most basic. You don't have to worry about other stuff attacking you from the course. I see. I actually don't remember too many maps from the one that I played way back in the day. Yeah, it's been a minute since I've been on the Wii version, even though it's probably one of my favorites of the <laughs> bunch. Yeah. Speaking of Super Smash Brothers, has anybody played Multiverse yet? Ooh, no, I have not. I see. It's essentially like, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't care for it that much. Uh, it's essentially... Smash Brothers, but with characters from the multiverse. So you get like Scooby Doo, you get Batman, Wonder Woman, uh, who else? Finn and Jake, Tom and Jerry. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> just just the visual of like Scooby Doo <laughs> beating up Batman. <laughs> That's an interesting visual I have in my head now. <laughs> yeah, it, well, it's definitely possible through the multiverse game. As I never really played it all that much. I'm not a fan of the graphics. The graphics are a little bit too fancy in my eyes. And as I said before, Smash Brothers can get really repetitive if you play it too much. Uh, but yeah, that's a game that has come out recently. It was extremely hyped when it first came out. And I think if you are a fan of like DC, Batman... All, all the geeky stuff, uh, for lack of a better term. I think if you're into all that stuff, it's definitely the game for you. And if you also like Smash Brothers, it's also the game for you. And if you also like making your friends hate you, it's also the game for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll definitely have to give that a look. I mean, <laughs> I definitely give that a look. Uh, it's on Epic Games for free, I believe, and I think it might also be on Steam as well. I'm not entirely sure, but I got it from Epic Games, and it's definitely free there. Good stuff. Yeah, just out of curiosity, have you ever played Brawlhalla? Uh, I never played it, but I did have. I had it installed, but I never quite took the time to play it. Mm -hmm. It's Smash Brothers, but two D, and with All entirely right. original characters. So it's not like the graphics are like too fancy or anything like that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there definitely been a lot of video games in that genre of gaming and stuff. The 
Super Mario Brothers genre type thing. But yeah, definitely it's crazy how times have changed and stuff. But one thing that I guess has to change is the fact that all these Mario games are still holding up today. Yeah. And uh, does anybody else, I've, I've kind of had a roadblock here, does anybody have anything else that they maybe want to discuss? Not particularly. I think Vix, Derek, you guys got something for me? Nah, not this time. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, then maybe we can go ahead and cap it off now. I'd like to thank everybody for watching and listening. I'll go ahead and give our channel a subscription. Go ahead and follow us on Anchor and uh, all the. I actually, I gotta make an end card actually for the visual version of this. Uh, so I, I'm gonna figure out what sites that we're all on and stuff. I know we're on Instagram. No, we're on TikTok now. So I'll make sure to leave links and stuff in the description below. Uh, but anyways, thank you all for watching and listening, and uh, we'll see you next time.